So, um, the, I want to talk about the live for a second. The live was crazy. Uh, it was an idea of Drew's. That it was a like an absolute six hours of uh, going to all different stages. Well, we went to three different ones. We're very lucky that uh, Greg Urell's uh, let us in there, and <coughs> we had free reign to um, to film and uh, and play with any horses. We got a list of about twelve horses. Somehow we managed to stay on time, even though I was talking and even though we had people asking questions. Um, and so, <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing. <coughs> so, um, it was pretty incredible, actually. Eat donuts, huge Jackman, huge Jackman, huge Jackman. Anyway, I can't even say it. Yes, I was eating donuts. I'm eating donuts in this film clip. Um, you'll see what that was about. Anyway, um, so... Um, Look, welcome to us, uh, 20, show 28, welcome, thank you for coming. Uh... My name's Christian Langeter and I'm an equine soft tissue therapist. I specialise in treating muscular issues in performance horses. Um, I'm rambling, let's just start uh, episode 28. Here's a video from uh, when we did uh, the big live and uh, let's begin it. Here we go. Good for the live. <laughs> that makes you up better than coffee, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Shelly. Yes, yes. What? Uh, hang on, Snow White Mama. May I bring my feisty wild Boston Terrier to you? Just kidding. Yeah. I will bring donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, I miss working at the racetrack with horses. Even North, they are just okay, we can... Gorgeous animals. They are, Shelley, they are. This one just did a. Rear it up a bit. Rear it up a bit. While well, Christian just casually treats and eats a donut. <laughs> 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 right, so that was one of the uh, one of the horses that we treated on the live. Um, obviously, rearing up, it was a little bit sensitive in the neck, a little bit merry. Um, you know, what do you do? These are the things that happen. People often ask if, um, and, and basically it was C2 and lower neck. Um, people often ask if the horses that I treat are all really chilled. Uh, that was an example of no, they're not. In fact, often they're not, but it was also an example of, even though they do that, um, if I just sit with them and keep treating them, they actually just chill out. So most of the horses that I deal with are very lively. They're very fed up. They're performance horses. They're ready to, um, they're, they're, they're pretty highly like sprung up. So um, of course I'm always having to be uh, mindful. Um, Drew who came with me was like, you know, I mean, he got to see a bunch of horses and to his credit, um, he was in the, in the uh, stalls with them most of the time as well. So, uh, how are you, Drew? Good how fun. You Good fun? Good fun. Was all right? Yeah. Um, I'd like to also say hello to my uh, favourite staff member at URLs, which is um, uh, Tori, Eliza, Asian Dave, and um, Jim. <laughs> anyway, hello, Pucci has just joined in. Um, all right, sorry. Um, a lot of resources uh, that you saw on the live were... We're not wrong anywhere. Would that be normal? Oh, yeah. So, Martin, hey, how are you? You're from, you're the Irish person that we told to go to sleep um, at 2.30 in the morning. You obviously don't like sleeping, but this is a lot better time for you. Yeah, look, if you maintain them, and, and by maintenance, I mean mostly like those, those racehorses that were, um, uh, that are worked every day, they're, you know what, I see them maybe once a month or treat them once a month. The, I, and if you also noticed, Martin, not only were most of the horses not sore, but I think out of the 12 horses that I treated that day, maybe one of them needed a full treatment. So out of all those horses, one needed a full treatment. That could have been one of the ones that they said something's wrong with, so could we please check it? So you're right. No, it's more common that horses don't have an issue than they do have an issue. But having said that, generally, most people are... Who are who, sorry, Ranch Horse Gay joined. Um, 
most but most people who are just riding horses haven't had their horse seen to by someone that's capable that sounds horrible but it's true or they just haven't had their horse seen to so it's very very typical for um, normal horses if I just treat normal people's horses the maintenance time that I ask for is probably about three months so um, when you go to a stable like Urels that look after their horses properly, you'll find that very commonly they don't need any treatment whatsoever. They're just able to run through. And I think they had a winner yesterday plus a second yesterday as well. Um, I think Ready Tiger um, almost pipped Julia Sandu's horse and um, congratulations to both of those. But uh, like you see, you would have seen Ready Tiger on the live because we actually treated him on the lives or looked over him on the lives um and he almost won his race pretty comfortable is uh is your payment for education australian dollar no it is american dollars um it will be in us hi sandy um no it's in us dollars um the reason i did it in us dollars is mostly us people from the us follow me so um i know that we understand the us dollars but americans might have difficulty understanding what an Australian dollar is. That's the same reason why the website is langataequine.com rather than .com.au because I think that um, American people seeing .com.au don't really understand what the AU is and so they might be a little bit worried about clicking on a site that has AU on it or doing anything with a .com.au. So it's 150 American dollars, but I tell you what, Sandy, the other thing about it, about the website, which I'm really proud of and everyone's really happy with, was it was $150 for a year. Oh, thank you. Let the battle begin. Thank you um, for joining. Uh, anyway, uh, the thing that I, uh, I'm going to buy it anyway, I thought I was making sure I have enough. Would you recommend a year or life? Oh, so do a year. It's up to you, Sandy. So 80% of people who bought it for a year, when I ended up offering the lifetime one for an extra 100 bucks, they bought 80% bought the lifetime one straight away. Uh, it's always going to keep changing. There is so much information there. I think that you take it, you would battle um, to be able to absolutely absorb it in a year. So everyone goes for more than a year. And, um, uh, you know, there you go. So I reckon uh, like you can take it for a year and we'll let you upgrade for a hundred bucks if you think it's worthwhile. So take it for a year. And if you want to upgrade, just contact us and we can help you upgrade so you don't end up having to pay several years. But um, well worth uh, doing. Um, what else? Who, who else? Yeah, um, it's worth it. I think it's worth it because you know what? Even if you can just tell the difference, well, even if you can check your horse, um, have a therapist come out and then uh, check the horse afterwards again and know whether they've done the job or not, it's already worth it because then you can gauge your therapist and you can get a better one if they didn't. And you can always talk to your therapist like you know what you're talking about. And in fact, you will know because you'll be able to check it. And if you learn how to check your horse like this, I guarantee you, you'll know more than 95% of therapists. Um, I don't often do, uh, is it Pooch or Jackson? Um, puppy dog. Puppy dog. Um, I don't, uh, so, you know, I don't often do um, figures and percentages. A mate of my Perry does, but um, you, you will know more than most therapists if you do, uh, if you sign up to my thing on the internet. Hang on. Um, you have no idea how long I waited to come across someone like you. Oh, uh, energy work. Yeah, well, it is. Um, absolutely. And I'm going to teach that too. Drew is about to hit another video. So I'll hold up on the question. Can I ask a question, please? Yep. I love your work and I think you're amazing. Yes, user whatever. Um, user 41477 3379. You can definitely ask. Please advise. Um, Horse recovering from suspensory injury turned out for six months. Um, I'm sure it's back in work. Um, I don't know. You know what? Uh, so far as suspensory, what would I do in terms of starting off again? Over here, they work them on hard ground really lightly just to try to get the shock uh, um, to start growing collagen fibers. Um, suspensory is not my thing. I'm very good at staying in my lane. Suspensories are structural. I pass that sort of stuff off to vets or people who are doing rehab. I'm not a rehabber. I just fix up muscles. Um, however, on average, does the treatment last for, for each horse? Ah, yeah. The, the muscle is fixed. So if I treat a muscle, this will be the last question and then we'll go to a video. But 
when I fix the muscle, the muscle is fixed. There is a, uh, a dysfunction in the muscle. I fix the dysfunction. So it lasts until the horse re-injures or if you've got an underlying issue somewhere else. So um, when I treat it, it lasts. Um, equine edits, I would speak to your vet or a physio or someone that does rehab about the uh, suspensory, but usually we work them on hard surfaces to create um, to create uh, collagen fibers growing again. But uh, you know, it will be time to move probably about now. So anyway, all right, we're going to go to another video. Oh, this one's just a, a chilled treating one. I don't know how long it goes for. Oh, we'll... uh, is it a long one? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Can you just sort of talk about what bits you're touching? Sure. Let me. Um, and guys, keep the questions coming. We'll get back to them. Amazing. Biceps femoris medial glute, right? So this is part of the checking thing. That was medial glute. So I'm checking Pandora's box there, and then I'm opening up the, the uh, connective tissue. That's opening up fascia. It's very Bowen-esque, right? And then I go into the, the pelvis. Yeah. So that's like the attachment of that main back muscle on top of the pel, like where it attaches into the top of the pelvis. I treat that. That's one of my. That's one of my. Um, I can actually see it here while I'm doing. That's one of my Pandora's box uh, muscles, like that area where my hands kind of are. This is medial glute. I'm just rolling through the medial glute. And all I'm doing is finding the tight part and holding that part of the muscle in traction. And it's kind of like an isolated stretch for any bit of the muscle. Now I go to biceps femoris. See, I treat quicker than I can actually explain it, right? So then I go to biceps femoris. Now this is a Greg Urell stable as well. The thing I like about these videos, I don't get many views, but the amount of people that say that these chilled treating ones are something that they listen to at night time if they've got anxiety or like they just chill out and watch them. Um, so there it's fixed. <clears throat> just checking the pelvis one more time because I'm not happy with something there that I can see that you can't really see on the screen. You can see that lift up. That pelvic attachment that I'm looking at right there is actually a really common one for mid-back soreness. So. Ah, is that pelvis or TFL that I treated right there? That's the, the attachment of long isthmus into the top of the pelvis. Um, Whoops. Uh, Dave Griff. Hi, Christian. When you say treat, is it a muscle manipulation? Yeah, Dave, it kind of is. So the way I work is very osteopathic. Um, I open up connective tissue. When you see me checking a horse, I'm already treating. So I'm already opening up a regular connective tissue. It's called fascia. So I'm opening up the fascia and then I'm looking for muscles that are dysfunctional, muscles that are either in spasm or not working properly and then I have my own way of treating them. You can, you yourself can rub them, massage them, do whatever. There are several different ways to get a muscle to check itself. So you can either rub it, you can flick it, or, or, or you can like the way I, so you can, you can rub it, you can flick it, or you can hold it in traction like a stretch. And the way that I do it is I actually, someone just said energy work. The way I do it is I actually touch the muscle and somehow I'm able to um, initiate a response in the muscle to have the little organs at the end of each muscle recalibrate. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So treating for me is very homeopath homeopathic, is very osteopathic. Um, it's very subtle, it doesn't look like much. Um, and so in some other times it looks like I'm actually doing quite a bit. Um, so I hope that is your answer, Dave. Um, Isabel, hello. Uh, what do you do when a horse is rearing, kicking um, during treatment? Oh, what do I do? Just chill out and keep treating. Um, is probably on the Greyhound lab. Yeah, no worries. Yes, Dave. I got, I, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I hope that is a good answer, Dave. So Isabel, um, if they do rear kick or whatever, um, then I make sure that I've got a good handler. I make sure that I'm settled and that I'm calm. Um, and then I usually treat an area of the horse 
that I know is sore that I can treat really nicely and give them an idea of who I am and what I'm up to. And once they realize who I am and what I'm up to, then usually they chill out a little bit. And so I can sort of like, I start trying to get them into a parasympathetic state, um, which is that licky chewy, like the release kind of thing. I try to get them in that state, which is kind of a meditative state. I do that by doing things that I know the horse will like and things that I can fix that aren't uh, intimidating for the horse. But you'll see often that they actually get a little bit um, uneasy and it's not hard to settle them down. Uh, you just have to make sure that you settle yourself down first because they'll follow you. Um, so it's um, sort of like, it's what is it called ontology, but the, the horses don't react to what you're doing. They act to what, who you're being. So make sure that you're being still and that you're being calm and then the horse will follow you. It's the same as riders who are nervous. The horse is going to get nervous, but riders that are like really super chilled, the horse will always follow them or usually. Um, can I talk about knots in horses' necks? Yeah, I'm not a knot person. The easiest way to release neck tension. Well, the easiest way to release neck tension is to know um, which muscle is uh, the problem, which muscle is di dysfunctional. I don't talk about knots. I talk about dysfunction or tightness um, or restricted fascia. Um, a knot is just basically a muscle that is in spasm. So, um, so you just need to know uh, which part of the neck you need to be treating um, and what part of the neck is the most important. You can do that by going onto my website and having a look at it and um, checking it out. Um, like I'm going to say this. So go to my website at langaderequine.com for the recording. Drew will put it here, somewhere here. Um, langaderequine.com. Have a look. It's basically, I am teaching people how to check their own horses at the moment. I am doing a treatment course as well, but uh, I'm going to get back to you, Huge. Give me a second. Um, so um, the website is basically there to teach people how to check things. So it's exactly what you're asking about, Equine Edits. It um, teaches you how to know which part of the neck um, is sore. And then, as I often say, you can rub it, massage it, use a machine, use whatever at this point. Um, or if you're already a therapist, you can use whatever your therapy is to treat that particular issue. Uh, it just gives you an idea of exactly what you should be treating. Because as I also often say, it's not the treatment that you use, it's knowing that you're put, doing it in the right spot. So people often ask if um, particular things work. Um, and I think most of them do work. It's just, do you know where to put those things? So go and check it out, figure out how to, or where to, um, where to massage what's sore and then actually treat that. Uh, later on today. So cool. All right. Let's go to an, another video. Yep. Cool. I'm um, go. going. Going. <laughs> I'm with Butchie, my wife. She's filming, you know, this is going to go with, anyway. Anyway, um, this is Zeus. I just wanted to show you some of the hamstrings. If you get a horse and it's sore in the hamstrings, there's three different places you're going to look, one of which you should ignore. First one is this bicep femoris, and that sometimes can go down into the stifle. That's what I call the poverty line through here. So it's this big muscle. If you're doing dressage and you're sitting properly, this should be a little bit sore. So this is what they work. That's bicep femoris. This is semi-tendinosis. Now it goes through here. This should never be sore, or it never is when I'm treating anything. The last one is usually in jumpers or racing. If they get out of the gate weird, or if you're working your dressage horse incorrectly, it will be this muscle right here, which is this big muscle here. Yeah, so it's that one. And when I treat it, I'm gonna treat it. Now, if you're gonna treat it, you can just massage that big thing or just where the fur stops here. I don't know if you can see that, but right where the fur stops. If you only treat there, you're always still gonna have a reaction here. Are you getting me as well or just yeah, the horse? Yeah, yeah, no both. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna treat it, but I treat right up where the first stops up high up to the tail so it's the attachment of that big muscle like i said if you just treat down there you're not going to get it there'll always be a little bit left over here but i can treat up here like i am and then the whole muscle will let go so there you go and we got a little bit left right there so anyway ben o'carroll he's got a horse running today what was it Jekyll and Hyde's running today at Sandown. Apparently Ben's all dressed up. Well done, Ben, because Ben thinks he might win. So 
let's have a look. You can watch that today. We'll see what happens. Anyway, it's first of April, April Fool's Day. Anyway, there you go. Um, for those people who like to pick on me, this could be trickery, seeing it's April Fool's Day. No, anyway, there you go. Hamstrings. Thank you. Bye. Right, I'd like to thank Putchy for doing that filming. Oh, we've got a few. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank Putchy. That was her first film, a thing that she did for me. Pretty good job, actually. Um, very good. Um, and it was kind of cool having Putchy follow me for a day, uh, which we went to Geelong. It was awesome. We just spent a day together. We don't often get to do things together like that, so it was really cool. Um, ben O'Farrell's uh, stable. Ben is a breaker trainer out of Geelong. Um, basically showing you the different parts of the hamstrings like we were talking about um, fixing. Hi, Pooch. So awesome. Yeah. Hello. How are you going? Um, uh, did the horse win? Dave, sorry to say the horse did not. <laughs> but as I say, um, you know, uh, Drew and I, uh, from, from the Super Bowl to, uh, you know, I don't like to tip because um, I'm not very good at tipping. If I was good at tipping, I wouldn't be doing this for a job. Um, I would be having a tipping show with you right now, and um, it didn't. No, it didn't go great. It he he pulled up fine. I don't remember exactly what happened in the race. I think there was a whole bunch of, you know, you know what racing's like, Dave. Anyway, I mean, you know, at least you don't have to deal with jockeys. Um, uh, Pucci, yeah, it was awesome. Thanks so much for spending a day. It's really cool. We've been um, making sure that we do a whole bunch of that. Um, cool. Um, next bit. Brett Chain Nichols Stable um, <clears throat> in Mornington. He had an open day here a couple of, like last weekend, I think it was. Some really nice yearlings, so you should check out his stable. But anyway, this is Eugenius. He's running on the weekend. There's a thing that he has. He's uh, Streets of Avalon's brother. Streets of Avalon had a really similar thing here, which is this dip here. Now, if you've got a dip in the back, one of the things that it could be is this muscle kind of goes like this and divides it attaches into the spine and also into the top of the pelvis that's the pelvis right here so i'm looking for the attachment of this uh -uh, good boy and i'm just going to apply some pressure to it first <clears throat> so the soreness is kind of mid back what happens is this is the long isthmus the medial glute this bum muscle i'm going to talk while i'm training as i usually do but this bum muscle kind of scallops in here. So as you dip into that edge or just before for this muscle, it's where that part of the, the long isthmus attaches into the pelvis. So the soreness is right up here, but you treat it down in the pelvis. Once again, if you've got a horse, don't make, if you've got a horse that's got um, the soreness here, you can use a gun, etc., etc. But be mindful, this is the gut right here. So there's no muscle here, it's all organ. So you want to avoid that, but you definitely want to get this pelvic attachment. Right. Anyway, what better? So check your horse. If you get a dip here, just check that muscle and you just do it just by rolling through here to make sure it's set. Anyway, thank you, bye. That pelvic part where I punched, uh, that part, the pelvic part where I punched, um, that's just the attachment for the long back muscle, one of the attachments. And so it's very commonly sore in, Horses. If you have a horse that's sore in the loin area or that area, then um, just check out one of the most common places I've said this already today is check that muscle in the pelvis where that long muscle attaches into the pelvis. Cool. What else do we have? One Drew? more and then we're one more video coming up on about your house. So, You've got a very busy day. sorry, what? You've got a very busy day. I do have a very busy day. I'm, um, I am flying out to Adelaide for those who. Um, in Adelaide. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Sandy. Um, for, so I'm flying out to Adelaide um, to treat a horse or, or a few horses tomorrow. Uh, Benedetta's racing today. I'm sure a few others for Jason Moran are racing today. Um, and so I'm flying in, flying out. So you won't see me in Adelaide because I'll, unless you're at the racetrack, um, I'm going to be there around 10 o'clock or 10.30. I fly in, treat the horses, fly straight back out again. Um, so it's kind of how my life is at the moment. Have you thought about doing live workshops? Yeah, we have, um, and we're going to definitely do that. What I think is gonna happen is I will actually create the website and then we're going to actually be doing live workshops with people who sign up to the, uh, to the treatment part of my 
uh, website. So um, live workshops will be available to people who sign up to it because there's no point in uh, doing a live workshop with people who uh, don't understand what we're going to be talking about. So you'll be able to follow what's going on. You'll be able to print stuff off or do and just follow. Um, we, but definitely um, my path is kind of going to doing clinics, training, all that sort of stuff. Um, we're going to take this last one and then we'll do the last video. Uh, when treating medial glute, is it common for the muscle to jump in the saddle area? Yes, absolutely, Martin. So what happens is the medial glute, um, I should get a diagram behind me or something, but the medial glute has a thing called the gluteal tongue. So you've got the main bum muscle, but it scallops into the back. It's called the gluteal tongue. So when you roll into that medial glute and apply pressure or treat it, you will see the loin or that mid back, lower back part jump up. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely normal. That shows you that you actually have a reactive uh, medial glute. And all you do is stick to the medial glute. Don't go up to where the, um, where the gluteal tongue reaction is. You stick to that main bum muscle. So don't then treat up near the middle of the, or up into the back. Just stick to the medial glute and you will absolutely fix it. That's just a, a response to let you know, an involuntary spasm to let you know that you're on the right spot. So good question, Martin. Thanks, man. Cool. So this is Media Award. Um, she's just come off the track. She's just been worked by Niall, who's just over there. Hi, Niall. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's Niall, Niall the rock star. So Niall works at Media Award. Um, we're just having a bit of a look at her. Two things with her. One is her deep pec, which you can see under here. That's the muscle that holds her leg together. Now, Niall was saying that she was going a bit weird in the shoulders. So we've checked that. I'm just going to treat that really quickly. The other one, hang on, I'm just going to treat it. So we're at Geelong race course. This is what they look like after track work, a little bit sweaty. Um, she's losing, losing a lot of coat, but they all are. That's gone. Now the other one that I want, whenever you see a sore neck here and it doesn't have the lines, you look at, I call it, it's sternocephalicus. It's a muscle right there, yeah? So I'm just gonna quickly fix that up so you can just see what, what we do here. There's a neck coming on. And now Vin's behind us too. Hey Vin. Can show Vin too, you can flip it out. Hi Vin, how are you going? <laughs> it's a communal video, this one. Anyway, and that's gone now too. So her front will definitely move better. She'll be able to hold her legs together a lot better. Um, so group one, in, group one winning, I can't even say it, media award. Um, check it out during the spring. Thanks. Point out a few things. Hi guys, I'll, uh, I want to point a few things out about that video. Firstly, um, uh, Vin Malady, who who was in that, um, who was walking the horse, he now uh, trains for Woodside Stud. Um, Niall Phillips, who was in the, the who was the uh, guy sitting on the horse. Niall Phillips, if you've watched the movie, the Australian movie, The Cup, um, it's about a horse called Media Puzzle, which is really weird because we were treating Media Awards, so there's a whole bunch of little weirdness about it. Um, Niall Phillips is actually in that movie or he's a character of him is in that movie because Niall's brother was training media puzzle when it was in when it came to Australia from Ireland. Um, so um, it's kind of weird that we're with Media Award, we're with Niall Phillips um, who's got a character in the cup and it was media puzzle which was Damien Oliver's um, Melbourne Cup win that was um, in the movie. Anyway. There you go. Lots of synchronicities. So um, that's about 28 what time is it, Drew? Yeah, we're right on uh, half an hour, 35, we, 35 minutes. We've hit half an hour. Uh, Isabel, do you get many opportunities to travel with your job? <laughs> he gets thousands of opportunities. Uh, I'm curious, as a first year vet, stu uh, uh, vet physio student. Yes, all right. So um, tomorrow I'm flying out to Adelaide. Um, then I'm in Singapore um, in a couple of weeks, working in Singapore. Um, so yeah, and obviously this sort of thing, I would like to be doing things, Poochie's leaving, bye Pooch. Um, anyway, um, I'd, uh, I'm sure with what I'm doing now and training people, there's going to be a whole bunch of um, opportunities. I, there already is, I'm being called out all over the world. Um, zoo. The, zoo, I, I work for zoos. Um, the uh, fish place in... Oh, the fish place in Italy. I've been asked to go and have a look at fish, fish or... or um, Aquatic animals in Italy. Um, oh, yeah. Give me one sec. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, there's plenty of opportunities to travel. Um, whether it's worthwhile, like even though I'm going to be in Singapore um, for about four days, uh, is it worthwhile? Uh, you know, that's the part that we need to, that I'm yet to work out because I also am very loyal to all my clients here in Australia and um, I love working with them. Drew spent a day with them and he saw how amazing the people I work with are. So um, I like working with the people I work with here and maintaining what you've got here and also trying to do all this sort of stuff. I literally do do 16 hour days. Um, you know, I'll be working all week, like going through everything this week. I do not get any time off this week. Is that it? Um, uh, Christian Langer, thanks for sharing your knowledge. You're very welcome. Can you scroll down and touch Drew for me? There was uh, Sarah. Sarah, thank you for sharing. Uh, I will look out for your lives when you're on again, safe flight. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. If anyone tells you that they know everything, they are lying. Uh, absolutely, no one can know everything and your perspectives change all the time. So uh, with that, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Guys, Stall, I'm absolutely happy to share my knowledge. You all rock. Thank you for um, supporting me. Thanks for all that sort of stuff. Uh, we got to jump because I got a bunch of stuff to do. Um, but I love taking time out to give you guys a little bit of stuff and all the rest of it. Look at the like people are going fucking insane. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Stop breaking your fingers. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll see you next week. We're definitely going to do next week. Um, we are doing next week early, I think, at the same time, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I fly out to Thailand that afternoon. So I'm doing a lot of flying and a lot of stuff. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Have a great day. Go check out my website. Do all that stuff. Anyway. <laughs>